everyone. Welcome to the podcast. I'm Dan Alden, and Senior Pastor of Reality Church here in Perth, Western Australia. And I'm so glad you've joined us to get a hold of this week's message. I really believe God wants to do something fresh and powerful in your life. And I'm praying that this message you're about to hear will be a catalyst for that. So enjoy the message. And remember, Jesus is the reality you've been looking for. So, so good. Well, it's been a good morning so far. And um, how many people have been in, enjoying the series so far? How many people have been a little bit agitated to think about creativity maybe in a way that we haven't before? Anybody? Anybody just been thinking, man, I, yeah, I've, I kind of might have lost touch with some of my creative side, but I've been challenged. I've been stirred to become reacquainted. I pray that this series would activate within us the creativity that's already there. I pray that this series would call forth something out of us that God's already put into us. And that this series would be a catalyst for growth in ways of creating things and, and in our life, whatever it might be. Because I believe, and we're going to talk about today, that creativity is such an important part of life itself. Amen? You know, I was just yesterday having a good time with my son playing Minecraft. Anyone ever played Minecraft before? <laughs> Minecraft is awesome. And I must admit, it took me a while to warm up to it because... I'm like new school when it comes to graphics and I want to see high definition screens and 4K and retina and all this. And Minecraft is deliberately old school. Like it's deliberately pixelated. And I'm like, that frustrated me from the beginning. But my sons have always loved it. And so yesterday Hunter was really just saying, Dad, you got to come and build with me in this world that we're, that we're making stuff. And it's, it's, we're in creative mode, Dad. We're not in survival mode. We're in creative mode. Somebody say creative mode. So we're in creative mode, Dad, so you can get any of the tools that, you, that are available in the whole game, any of the, the bricks, any of the uh, materials, and you can just do whatever you want with them. You don't have to mine for them. You don't have to find them. They're just, you got a full inventory. That sounds pretty good, right? And so we were just hanging out and, and building, and we built this awesome mansion, and, and it was epic. Like It had an amazing entry that came in just off the, off the beach so you could come in on a boat and just straight up. And we had this huge three-story house and it was just so much fun. And I realized that sometimes when it comes to creativity, creativity is about having fun, yeah? Sometimes it's about having fun and enjoying the gift of creativity. I gotta tell you, I reckon that God was having fun during the seven days of creation when he was creating the universe. Do you reckon? I mean, sometimes we get all theological about it and was it a literal day or was it a thousand years or was it over, you know, is it, is it, is it a figure of speech and all that? I don't care about any of that today. What I wanna say is that I think God, the creator of all things, was having a blast when his imagination was bringing things into reality by his word. And and at the end of each day, after he made different things in the universe, said, it was good. I can just imagine God just looking down and saying, that's good. That's good with a smile, with a sense of joy, satisfaction. Are you with me? Can you imagine when he created all of the, the mammals and the beasts of the earth and all the, the crazy creatures that run around? I mean, we, we don't even know all of the species that are out there. Things, ha things are out there that we don't even know about. And God just created all of them from his imagination. I'm pretty sure he was having a good time. I reckon he was having a laugh about some of the things that he made. I reckon he was just having an absolute blast. And then he, he, he comes to the final day and he creates you and me in his image. On the first you know, days of creation at the end, he, he capped it off by saying it was good. But when he made you and I in his image and threw us into that creation, he said it was very good. What he saw was very good because it was a next level. Because all of these things that God created had the ability to reproduce after their own kind. They had the seed within them, whether it was a plant and there was seed for more plants, or whether it was an animal had the ability to reproduce after its own kind. And God gave that to us as well, but God gave us something from the next level of the dimension of God, which was a creative being. We became a creative beings and He threw us into His creation and He said, now go and create. The first commission to us was to be fruitful and to multiply and to subdue the earth and to fill it. There's a lot of creativity in that couple of words. There's a lot of potential for creativity. 
God, we heard about in week one that God gives Adam the job of naming all of these animals that he created. But God worked a masterpiece of creation. Then he put his creative nature on the inside of us and he threw us into creation and said, hey, continue the story. Keep things going. How about we create together? How about you take all of this raw materials, which is like Minecraft. It's kind of like a mini version of creation because you have all of the raw materials, but then you have to use your imagination, see what you can do with it. And God's like, here's, here's everything. See what you can come up with. And we've been discovering new ways to create and to work with all that God's given us ever since. And we've, as human beings, we've created some absolutely incredible, incredible things. And it's been fun. (laughs) How many people think it's fun to watch creativity come to life? I love every time there's like a latest Apple keynote And every year they do a couple of them where they release their latest creativity to the world, where they announce the new developments and innovations. I love seeing creativity. I love seeing inventions when things are made that just like you're like, whoa, I've just never even thought about that. And new things come about. It's fun. It's awesome. We live in a world where creativity is is just at a a sweet spot right now. It's peaking. And I think that we need to get in on it. We need to be people that find our creative energy and our creative um, identity that's been given to us by God and start creating things for fun, for others, and for the glory of God. Can anyone say yeah in the house today? See, I believe that being created by God makes us inherently creative. And I want to go to 2 Corinthians 5.17 because we've actually got double portion creativity. I want you to see this. It says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Somebody say a new creation. So God created you at the very beginning, but then in Christ we become a new creation. We've been recreated, so we got like double portion of creativity on our life. You're sitting next to someone who's got a double portion of God's creativity upon them and within them. I don't know if you heard me, but I said you're sitting next to someone who's got a double portion of the creative genius of God. First of all, created as a human being, then recreated in the resurrection life and spirit of God through Jesus Christ, now to be a born again human being who has the creative power of God literally oozing and flowing through our very being. You are a new creation. Guess what? Old things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. All things. Somebody say all things. I want to read this from the Passion Translation. It says, Now if anyone is enfolded into Christ, he has become an entirely new creation. All that is related to the old order has vanished. Behold, everything is fresh and new. Don't you love that? Everything is fresh and new. Guess what? You are part of that equation. You are fresh and new, but everything to do with you has the potential to be fresh and new because we've been recreated in Christ Jesus. Everything is fresh and new. You've been made new, and I believe God wants to do new things through you. Amen? I just, I just can't get away from the fact that if I'm a new creation by the creator God and I'm made in his image and he's the creator of all things that I have been wired to be creative. I've been wired to create things. Behold, everything is fresh and new. I want to say, I want to prophesy that there are some fresh and new things that are going to come out of you in the season ahead. There are some fresh and creative business ideas. There's some fresh and creative music. There's some fresh and creative poetry. There's some fresh and creative cooking. Come on, somebody. That's going to bless people and warm people's soul. There's some fresh creative writing that's going to come out of people. Fresh and creative ideas. And I really believe that it's so important that we tap into this. You know, God spoke to me earlier this year about my own creativity and said, hey, did you realize that the creativity I've given you is actually for you too? I'd always framed up creativity in the context of having a purpose for others. That there's no point in creating a song 
unless that song is going to be part of the worship team and it's going to be used for people to sing it and it's going to be in a context of purpose. Uh, there's no point in me creating something just for the sake of creating it. That's kind of how I thought. But God kind of rebuked me on that and said, hey, I've actually given you creativity for all those reasons, yes, but also just for you to enjoy, for you to enjoy. And I feel like God said, your soul needs you to make room for your own creativity because it's going to be healthy and good for your soul. And I'd kind of been in a season where I was like, I've got all this creativity, but my purpose has shifted and changed, so I need to focus on those things now. And I neglected a lot of the creativity in my life, and I'd stopped creating things because I didn't see the purpose. But God showed me that the purpose is bigger than what I thought it was. The purpose includes being a blessing just to me. It's just for me as well. So I wonder what things today you might be sitting on that you've kind of gone, well, I don't, yeah, I don't see the point. But God wants to say to you today, the point is that it's also for your enjoyment. It's also just because. <laughs> it's just because I've made you creative. And part of who you are, part of the essence of who you are is a creative human being. And when you create, it's good for your soul. When you create, it's good for your whole entire life whether it's creating with wood, whether it's creating in the garden with landscapes, whether it's creating a tapestry with pottery. I don't know what it is that you're into. But when you create, even creating memories with other people is a part of the creative expression. You know, one of the reasons that we decide to go to the show and invest the money that it takes to go to the show and have a decent show, and if anyone's ever been before, you know it's not a cheap event and you know <laughs> Luke and I were talking about his um, show rage that he had to handle <laughs> when you roll up to pay for something you realize it's you know it's completely like blown out of <laughs> proportion of what it should cost but part of the reason why we said we're going to go we're going to do it we're going to pay for it is because we want to create memories for our kids and how many people know that you can't put a price on creating a memory that becomes part of the culture and the fabric of your future and your family and sometimes to be creative, you actually have to invest money. Hey, if you're an artist and you've got creative ability, you've got to buy some canvas, some paints. You've got to set up a space to paint and, and be creative. And it's an investment. And sometimes we think, you know what, I don't have the money. I, there's no purpose. Why would I go and spend $500 on setting up what the tools I need to be creative when I could put it off my mortgage and pay my house down faster? Well, that's awesome, but I don't want to be at the end of my life with a paid off house and no memories and no creativity that's blessed my life along the way. Now, I'm definitely going to pay my house off, but I'm going to put a bit aside to be creative. Are you with me? And so creativity isn't just about art. It's about creating memories, going on trips with people that you love. It's about making space to create moments. And, and I believe that sometimes there are certain things that are actually holding us back. I would say that all of us need a good dose of inspiration and a good dose of, come on, let's create. Are you with me? Because all of us could be creating more, yeah? Would you believe that? So I wanted to look at John chapter 10, verse 10, because I felt the Holy Spirit drawing me to this verse to encourage us and to maybe put it in the context of creativity for our lives to look at what happens when we do create and what happens when we allow circumstances or excuses or maybe bad time management or maybe a lack of priority or maybe sometimes the enemy to stop us from creating. Let's look at verse 10 of John chapter 10. It says, a thief has only one thing in mind. How many people know that the devil is a thief? And the Bible says here, Jesus says, the devil's got only one thing in mind. He's got one purpose in his existence, and that is what is about to follow. Here it is. His whole entire purpose for existence, his one thing in mind is that he wants to steal. He wants to, to slaughter or to kill, and he wants to destroy. Now, you can frame that into any area of life. I felt like God was saying, what if we looked at this in the context of creativity? What if the devil... Can we talk about the devil for a second? We're not going to give him any glory, but let's uncover some of his strategies. The devil is real, right? And he's at work in our culture. 
And he is at work with one purpose in his mind, one thing in his mind, and that is to kill, steal, and destroy. What if he was actually working to kill, steal, and destroy our creativity? What if there were things that had been, you know, instigated, scenarios, circumstances, things that were working towards this purpose of our creativity being somehow stolen, killed, or destroyed? Now, I've got in brackets here the word sacrifice, and this version gave some footnotes about the word kill. And it said the word kill in this passage wasn't necessarily used in the traditional way. The word that was used wasn't the traditional word for kill, but it was more so the word for slaughter or sacrifice. In terms of if you took an animal and made a sacrifice with that animal, that is what this word is talking about. Now, I don't know about you, but I've spoken to many people, and I think I've experienced in my own life, where I've gone through seasons of making excuses why I've had to sacrifice creativity that God has given me, and I've put it on the altar of logical excuses. But really what's been happening is my gifts and my talents and abilities have been sacrificed or slaughtered, but that's never God's intention for our life. Are you with me? Because there are things in our life that if we be honest, we've put them up on an altar as a sacrifice. Say, oh, I've got to lay that down. That was fine when I was a child. That was fine when I was a teenager. But now I've just got to put that on the altar because there's more important things in life. And here's today what I want to hopefully do is, is help us to shift our understanding of creativity from being something that's sort of this optional fun extra that if you happen to have all of this time available, then it would be really cool to use some of it. And to reframe it as something that's actually been put into our life by God's intention and design, and He's called us to work with it and to use it to create. So just know that there's an enemy who wants to steal, kill, and destroy, have us put creativity up as a sacrifice. But what does Jesus say? But I have come to give you everything in abundance, more than you expect, life in its fullness until you overflow. Oh, that's good. I'm glad somebody thinks that's good. But Jesus said, I've come to give you life in abundance, everything in abundance. So for me, that means, that means this side of my life as well. Amen? That means this part of our life. Jesus wants us to encounter creativity in our life to the point where we discover more than we expect, to where it enriches our life and becomes part of the overflow of our life. That's good news today. That's good news. What if creativity was actually an essential part of who you are? What if creating things, whether they're landscapes in a garden or paintings on a wall, what if creating things was actually a key part of the essence of who you are as somebody created in the image of God? And what if neglecting that, making excuses for that, letting the enemy come in and steal and rob that was actually diminishing the overflow and the quality of our life? Today, I want to encourage us how we can step back into that intentionally. Is anybody excited to join me on that journey? Because I want to live a life that shows forth this abundance Jesus speaks of. I want to live in that overflow. I want to live in that more than I can expect. And you know what I've found is that when I actually engage with creativity, and I've I've always been a bit more creative. You know how you sort of put people in stereotypes, say, oh, that person's creative and that person isn't as creative. We've already addressed that in this series. I said that that is just a stereotype. Everybody is creative. But I was sort of more one of those that, that gravitated towards creativity. And I've found that every time I've actually made room for that in my life and I've enjoyed the creativity God's given me, it has had a ripple effect of blessing and enhancing every other part of my life. So I really believe that Jesus wants us to step into it. So why don't we create? Why don't we create to our full potential? Why don't we make more room for it? Let's look at a few possible reasons. And the first reason today would be because of the constraints of creating. You can write that down if you've got notes, the constraints of creating. Why don't I create more because of the constraints of creating. See, how we see constraint in the context of creativity affects how we approach creating things. In other words, how we see the limitations that surround the creative act affects how we approach creativity. How many people have ever thought this? If I had 
more time, if I had more resource, if I had more opportunity, if I had more knowledge, if I had more people around me that understood what I want to do, then I would create more things. Has anyone ever thought of that or is it just me? I think we've all thought that before. We've looked at the limitation that surrounds the options of creativity in our life. And we've thought, if only I had more, then I would do more. And so we've, we've viewed the constraints because creativity comes with constraints. And we're going to talk about this in a minute, what this actually means. If we view it as a limitation, then we can find ourselves kind of disengaging from creativity. But if we look at the constraints and instead of seeing it as a limitation, we see it as a launch pad, then we have a platform for unlimited creativity. Let's, let's talk about this a bit more. Every creative medium actually has a limitation built into it, has constraint built into it. And sometimes that can be off-putting. Sometimes the situation around our creativity can have constraint. We have an idea that we want to do something, but yet we can't see how we can have enough time. We, we have this imagination to create something, but we don't see how we could have the budget to create it. Almost always when we begin to approach creativity, we're going to run into some sort of constraint, some sort of limitation, some sort of boundary lines that if we don't see it right, we'll end up becoming the thing that may turn us away from creating. But if we see it in the right perspective, can be the very thing that would propel us into it and become the very launch pad rather than a limitation for creating. Let's just think about creativity for a second. I'm just going to talk about a couple of categories, and of course there are more than this, but think about music, for instance. If you think about music, there's actually constraint built into the very nature of music, because within music, you've actually only got 12 notes to work with. Have you ever thought about that before? There's only 12 notes in music, that's it. And yet, with those 12 notes, you could look at it and think, there's only 12 notes. What can I do with 12 notes? This is so limited. I need hundreds. I need thousands to be able to create the things that I'm imagining. And yet, every single song you've ever heard, every, com every composition of music, every artist has had the same 12 notes to work with. But by putting their unique spin on it, their own image of God connecting with it, their own ideas and imagination have turned 12 limited notes into limitless songs of creativity that exist in the world today. Are you with me? Or you can think about colour. And I don't know a whole bunch about colour. I'm going to trust my research here today. But the primary colours that cannot be created by other colours, in other words, the parent colours, are yellow, red and blue. And that from those three colours... In the paint world, you can actually mix every other hue of color. Somebody says, I want to be a painter, but there's only three colors to work with. And yet somehow from three, when you embrace that restriction, when you embrace that limitation and say, come on, let's see what we can do with three. What if I mixed a bit of this one with that one? What if I took a bit of this and put it there? What if I you know, did this or did that, made it a bit darker or a bit lighter? Then we have the launch pad for limitless creation that we see in the world today. Did you know that your screen, your 4K television, your iPhone, your whatever screen you have is made up of three colors? RGB, red, green, and blue. That's all it's got. And brightness. That's all it's got to work with. But yet from that base can come every image you've ever seen on a screen. Isn't it incredible? So we start to reframe our brain that creativity is, is purposely limited. How about food? There's only really like four, four flavor sensations really that we experience, which is bitter, sweet, salty, and sour. But somehow with that and working all that together, we get unlimited dishes of creativity and, and experiences of food that can change our life. I mean, I, I came home the other day some of my wife's cooking and she'd really put a lot of love into it and a lot of creativity and thought and it wasn't just like the five minute, you know, whip something up, what have we got in the fridge, but it was like planned out and I came home and ate it and tasted it and it just ministered to my soul. 
It was changing my day. It was lifting me from one level to the next. The flavors that were created, just incredible. Oh, finally, what about architecture? What about architecture? We've got friends that have just been to Europe and people that have traveled the world and seen the different influences of architecture. But did you know that architects pretty much have a very limited palette to work with of lines, circles, triangles, squares? But by combining those shapes together, we see it becomes a launch pad for unlimited design. Are you with me? See, often we'll look at things like time and think, I've got imagination, I've got ideas, but I don't have time. Do you know what? The most productive person on the planet has got the exact same amount of time that you and I have. Isn't that crazy? And even by looking at time differently and thinking, okay, what can I do in the limitation that I've got? If I've got an hour, what can I create in an hour? You know, I love, I love competitions and challenges where, where we see people given raw materials and they're told, hey, you've got this much time and these materials, see what you can do. Anyone ever watch MasterChef? How, how good is Mystery Box? I don't know if they still do that, but they used to do that. And um, I think it was like every Sunday night or whatever, they'd come in and they'd be given the Mystery Box. And it was always this buzz in the atmosphere because people were excited. I think one just excitement was they didn't have to like think too wide in the spectrum. They knew it was going to be narrowed down to this very small, um, you know, options. There's only going to be a few things in this box. And then what's in the box is all you've got to work with. And, and sometimes when we're putting those sort of circumstances, that's when our brain actually kicks into overdrive and starts to imagine and starts to think and problem solve and come up with ideas and, and just create in ways that we wouldn't do if we just had, hey, you can cook anything in the world. You've got absolutely every ingredient. Some, you, sometimes you see people just like stun mullets, like, oh, I don't know what to do. Should I go the sweet? Should I go you know, savory? Should I go poultry? Should I go you know, beef? Should I go fish? I don't, I don't know. And we could get stuck in that overwhelming place of too many options. But creativity actually thrives in constraint. It's actually a proof of fact. You know, the inventors of Twitter said, knowing that creativity th thrives in an environment of constraint, they decided to limit Twitter to 140 characters, 140 letters only, and created a whole platform where people have to figure out what to say with only 140 characters. And it sparked a whole new movement of people saying things faster, saying things more condensed, saying things more creatively to pack more into less. Are you with me? And so wherever we look in our life, we might see constraint, we might see limitation, but what if we looked at that and said, that is just an opportunity for unlimited possibility? What if we looked at those 12 musical notes and instead of feeling like there wasn't enough to work with, what if we thought off the back of those, anything is possible? What if you had two hours a week to use your creative gifts and you thought, what could I do in two hours? What could I achieve in two hours? I've only got two. I've got to make something happen. Who knows what you might create? Are you with me? So I'm definitely the kind of guy that looks to the limitation first. I, I always feel like I don't have enough time. I don't have enough resource. I don't, and so many a missed opportunity. But I want to encourage you that today God wants you to see the constraints of creating differently. And we're always told that we should think outside the box when it comes to creativity. But what if we started thinking inside the box? What if we started saying, hey, forget what I don't have that's outside of my box. What have I got in the box right now? What have I got to work with? What have I got to work with? I've got a beat up old guitar somewhere. How about I get it out and get some new strings on it for $15 and start trying to learn that guitar again and see what happens. What can I get done in one hour? You see, the thing is we have more resources available to equip our creative side of our life than we've ever had before. Have you guys ever heard of the internet? The internet has sparked more content creation than any other revolution in history. It is also the greatest communication shift in like in hundreds of years. You can access so many things. And you know, there are things like Skillshare, I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but it doesn't matter what 
area of creativity you're into, you can go check out this website called Skillshare and you can find hundreds of people that will teach you things they've learned in a condensed version. You could learn probably more in an hour on a website like that than you could learn in a semester, maybe, of old school learning. Are you with me? We've got so much opportunity, so much opportunity, but sometimes we've got to just think, what is in my box right now? What have I got to work with? And put it to use. So there's the constraint of creativity. I think sometimes we wrestle with that. But then there's also the tension between creativity and responsibility. Now, I don't know if it's going to resonate with somebody today, but this is something that I've had to journey through. Creativity and responsibility don't seem to work together. Does anyone know what I'm saying? Like, You've got people that are super responsible and, you know, they're, they're planned and they've got their time management down pat and they've got their lists and their check boxes and they uh, have a good estimation of how long things will take and they're good at getting it done. They're very responsible people. Anyone know someone like that? Very responsible people of their word. And then you've got the stereotype like the creatives who are like, at 2 a.m. get some crazy idea and then stay up all night trying to make it happen and then completely fail their responsibilities the next day because they showed up to work half dead. and It almost seems like you're one or the other. And there is a tension between creating and responsibility. And sometimes we can fall into the trap of, hey, I've got all this responsibility right now. I don't have time for the play thing, which is creating. Because sometimes we see it as, as more optional, extra. But what if, what if we realize that we actually do have responsibilities, but we also have a responsibility to create? What if, we, what if we realize that creating isn't just this kind of play thing that we did when we were young, but it's actually part of our responsibility? As somebody created in the image of God, creativity versus responsibility it's a tension that we have to manage because we all have responsibility, but we all need to make space to create. And by looking at what we have, looking at the constraints, we can actually find limitless possibilities to create responsibility. The thing is creativity, although there's a tension with responsibility, creativity needs responsibility for it to really go anywhere. I mean, where would, the, where would the music artists be if they didn't have anybody who was responsible to help them get their music and take it out there to the world and to show people? Where, where, would, where would we be? There's got to be like a marriage of creating and responsibility that comes together. There's a tension to, mar- to, to manage and to marry. Maybe one of these resonates with you and you say, yeah, I'm in that space. I've got too many responsibilities. I don't have time to create. Or... I don't feel like the constraints that I have have really triggered an inspiration for me to create because I just feel like I'm too limited. Or maybe there's a sense of making excuses. Maybe there's a sense of maybe the enemy's come in and lied to you that you don't have creative value or that what you have to offer isn't worth anything. Wherever we sit today, I believe God wants us to reclaim our creative side for His glory, for our benefit, come on, and for the benefit of others. And so here's a couple of tips to get us going as we get ready to wrap up this message today. Here's some tips to get us going. Start with this, find some inspiration. Find inspiration. Whatever it is that you're into, whatever it is that you have a passion to create, find inspiration. It's never been a better time than now to find inspiration. Like I said, there are people, there are people online, there are people everywhere that you can get around, that you can watch, that you can find what they're doing and be inspired. To be inspired, yeah? Sometimes we need inspiration to get us going when it comes to creating things. Because we're busy, we, we, we can get tired, we can be exhausted, our energy needs to be refueled and nothing does it quite like being inspired, like inspiration, looking at someone else who's doing something in the same vein, in the same field. Maybe it's in education, you're looking for a way to, you've got a, you've got a dream to be able to maybe 
do education differently and teach the, in the classroom with a different edge and find someone who's doing it. Be inspired. Are you with me? I'm looking forward to this week because we have the ACC conference and I know that I'm going to come out of that place fully charged and fully inspired because it's an environment for inspiration. And so I want to make sure I put myself in those environments every year, hopefully more than every year. But when it comes to creativity, we've got to find inspiration. And maybe for you, that's just getting alone with God. Maybe that's going for a walk in nature. Maybe that's getting out and just getting away from responsibility for an hour and just get somewhere where you can be inspired without the pressure. And get inspired to create. And once you are inspired, then imagine something. Imagine something. Find inspiration. Imagine something. Just Thing, like what would I do? What would I love to create? See, some of us might be looking at me thinking like, Pastor Dan, I was looking for a deep message about Jesus. I was looking for something about the Holy Spirit. Can I tell you that Jesus and the Holy Spirit are very into creativity? He's the creator of the universe and it will bless your soul when you create. It doesn't matter what it is. When you create out of a sense of inspiration and imagination, Something of the presence of God actually gets involved in that process. I believe that. As I look around, I see people I know, people with different gifts and different crafts. And I'm hoping that today there'll be something of God that will just stir you to get back into it. To try something new. Find inspiration. Imagine something new. Create something we are got to take it from just imagination to actually doing it, right? Create it. Don't worry about the fear of failure. Don't worry if it's not that good. Create something and finally share it with someone. Share it with someone. You know what's so powerful about sharing with someone is that it actually keeps the loop of inspiration going. When you are inspired and you imagine and you create and then you share that with someone else, you've actually become more inspired. You feel re-inspired and you have the opportunity to inspire others. Amen? See, I remember even seeing one of our, um, Alini, one of our girls here, creating cupcakes and, and treats and stuff on Instagram and I was inspired. I was like, man, what am I doing with my gifts? This is awesome. Are you with me? You know, we got a guy at the back, Phil Ranger, who is incredible with woodwork. And I've seen some of the things that he's created and, and dollhouses and just incredible craftsmanship. Man, when I see that stuff, I get inspired. And sometimes we look at our own creativity and we think, it's not as good as I want it to be. I don't think I did a good job. But you know what? Even just your having a go has the power to inspire someone else. Hey, maybe you're into gardening and you love just getting in and setting up the garden and putting different plants together and this one works with that one and creating height and depth within the garden. Man, take some photos and show some people. Start a website with your garden and upload new pictures of how good your garden is. Inspire somebody. I don't know, I feel like there's some writers in here that need to get their pens back out and their notebooks. I'm looking across the room and I'm just feeling like God wants to encourage somebody who's got the gift of writing and maybe you've, you've looked at too many blank pages in the past and just gone, I don't know where to start. Maybe set yourself a challenge. I want to set myself a writing challenge. I'm going to write this many words a day on this particular subject and I'm going to see what happens after seven days. Create some constraint. Create some boundary. Put some barriers in that will actually become a launch pad for something fresh and something new. Are you with me? Creativity is part of our God-given identity. And often we find ourselves with too many excuses, with too many maybe laters, with too many I don't have enough to get started. But I believe God wants to kickstart our creativity today by saying, get inspired. Imagine something new. Actually create something and share it with somebody because who knows what it might trigger in them. Are you with me today, church? Why don't we bow our heads in this moment? And I know this is a bit of a different kind of message and this series is a little different. But I honestly believe that for the health and well-being of who we are as a person, we need to enjoy the creativity God has given us. 
some of us walking around, our faces are a little bit low to the ground. (laughs) Sometimes we get a little bit too responsible, a little bit too spiritual, a little bit too busy. And we miss some of the essence of the joy of making things. Kids are so good at creating. Yeah, they do have all the time in the world up their sleeve. But they're also not too hard on themselves. They're they're pretty cool with making something and telling you it, it looks like this, but you're looking at it and you can't figure out how they came to that conclusion. But you're like, that's awesome. But have you seen the joy on their face when they run up to you and show, Daddy, Daddy, I just drew a picture of the family. And you're like, whoa, I hope we don't look like that. But that's awesome. But have you seen the joy in their face? I believe God wants that joy for us. Whether it's cooking a meal, renovating a house, a backyard, writing a song, writing a story, writing a book. Man, you were created to create. So right now I'm going to pray and I want to ask that we stand to our feet. I'm going to pray and I'm going to trust that the Holy Spirit is at work right now in this place. Well, hey, thanks for joining us on the podcast today. We trust that God is doing something incredible in your life. And if you'd like to find out more about Reality Church or you want to find out more about having a relationship with God, head over to our website, myreality.church, and you can find out everything there. If you're in Perth, we would love to meet you. So come join us at a service on a Sunday. You can find all the details at our website, myreality.church. We hope to see you soon.